Welcome to the playground where the players play. And I'm your host, Eddie Flewellen. And um, one of the things that I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed about doing this, um, as most people know, I'm a keyboardist. I'm not a journalist. I'm not an interviewer. But I mean, some of the people that I get to interview, I'm like truly honored. And my guest today, Chris Jasper. Um, most of you know who Chris is, but I'm just going to say by way of uh, the Isley brothers and Jasper, um, I'm sorry, Isley, Jasper, Isley. And of course, Chris's own solo things. And Chris has like done so much like over the years. So um, again, I'm so honored that I get to interview Chris today. I get to talk to Chris today. Uh, Chris, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Man, this this is awesome. As I told Chris before we started recording, I'm like just sitting here, I'm talking to one of my keyboard heroes here. So, um, I mean, just iconic. I mean, the work that you've done like over the years. I mean, again, I mean, we talk about the Isley Brothers, you know, Isley, Jasper, Isley, and then of course your solo work, man. I've been a fan from way, way, way back. I'm not going to say how many years, but you to get the picture. <laughs> <laughs> from 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 way back <laughs> so again thank you thank you so much for being here how have you, how have you been oh good everything's really? good and you know uh i'm working on the music you know uh right now mm -hmm. uh, and everything's going pretty good cool cool during the whole pandemic thing um where how were you how did you fare during during that whole period oh, yeah, I was, you know i um i was doing a lot of recording during that time you know mm -hmm. uh and um, I put out a, a CD, you know, a, a cover CD uh, uh, of different songs that I had written when I was with the Isaac Brothers. Mm -hmm. There was also some songs that I wanted to cover, you know, a song from Sam Cooke, um, one from Billy Preston, um, You're Also Beautiful, um, and, some, and a couple of other tunes. Uh, okay. But it's, it was a cover album, an album that a lot of people have been asking me to do for a while, you know, why don't you go back and do some of those, you know, songs you did with the group, you know. Mm -hmm. I, did, I, did, I did three songs on that album from, mm -hmm. uh, that I wrote uh, for, for the group. And mm -hmm. uh, that's what I put out during the pandemic. And, you know, it was, it was really good, you know, good, good response. Cool, cool. I got to ask you, since, since you talk about the, the, the covers, first of all, I mean, you, you, you're an incredible writer, incredible, incredible writer. And and um, back in the day when you guys did the covers, you know, songs like Summer Breeze and 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 Hello and all that, how how did that come about? I mean, did did you suggest that? Was that an overall group thing or how, how did those those covers? Because it wasn't like you had to do it. But man, I mean, when you guys did it, you guys did an incredible job on all of it. But, you know, most 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 of the time it was like um, between, you know, Ronald and me, you mm -hmm. know, you know, if it was a song that we liked. Um, he said, you know, why, why don't we do a cover of this, you know, and then mm -hmm. come down and uh, we kind of rehearse it, you mm -hmm. know, try to, try to figure it out. Um, and um, for the most part, um, musically, you know, that was kind of, you know, my area, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of change it a bit, change it, you know, to, 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 to make it like, like, like it was a song that we, we came up with, you know what I mean? Right. To, yep. to change it enough mm -hmm. uh, to make it original, but to keep it um, so that people recognize the song too. Mm -hmm. you know, so it wasn't totally different. Yeah. And, um, you know, that was the chord structure thing that I got into. Um, I think you were alluding to um, one of the things you saw when I was playing um, some, some of the uh, chords and how mm -hmm. it changed the song. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, that's that's kind of my thing you know I, that's, yeah. that's what i did with the cover album yeah you know, i, I yeah. did the songs but i did them a little bit differently than the original you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be before we started recording for for the for this interview um i was telling chris that um i saw like a couple of things on youtube um one of them was an interview where he actually sat what was a grand piano um where he sat behind the piano and i got the chance to like listen to him play and and watch him play and i mean as you as you mentioned, I mean the chord structure was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> so awesome, awesome. Yeah, it's called uh, uh, an afternoon with Chris Jasper, and it's mm -hmm. on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I did that up at Sony uh, Music uh, because they were they were putting out a box set of the Isaac Brothers music, mm -hmm. and a lot of the people who are working there now, you know, were they they weren't they weren't familiar with a lot of the songs. You know, because of their age, you know, mm -hmm. that we did a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, 
they say, hey, would you come up and, you know, kind of, you know, demonstrate some of the songs and, you know, talk about them uh, with, with the, uh, uh, the people at mm -hmm. Sony. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they have a lounge up there, the Sony lounge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they set a sound, a sound uh, system there. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really good. It was, uh, I, I think the people really appreciated it because, you know, it was something they were working on. Mm -hmm out but i gave them a you know a little background of oh my god we're, we're done you know how yep. how to support it and all. yep and and I loved it too because um, I don't know if you know that um, I'm I, I'm a keyboardist as well and I start out you know following your career I start out playing classical love classical to me that's still home for me you know and I actually had like a game plan you know I, I love classical so much but I do want to play with a band I want to get with an R and B band or whatever so I want to double on another instrument I'm going to keep keep the classical over here. And then I'll go pick up the trombone because at the time, as you remember, there were like a, the horn groups were like the thing. Oh, yeah. So um, pick up a trombone, learn how to play trombone and everything. So, I mean, to speak to you, I mean, even in that vein, like um, you started, if I if I got it right, you started when you were seven? Yeah, I started. Classically uh, trained. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was a good And thing. I was eight, by the way, so. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's good to start early, you know, when you're young. Exactly. Mine is, you know, really... My, I, I like took in everything, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I remember the memory was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, did, uh, did you as a child? I mean, like you just mentioned, you took in everything. I yeah, mean. because I used to play by ear. Uh, the reason I started taking lessons was because my mother uh, suggested that I do so. She, mm -hmm. she saw me playing the songs uh, off the radio, you know, like I would hear a song and I would fill out the chords, you know, that I was hearing. She wow. said, you here for music, you should learn how to read music. Uh -huh. you know? And so um, this professor that went to our church, he, he, he taught piano lessons, you know, and he played the organ. Mm -hmm. and, um, she said, you, you, you got to take lessons from Pro Professor Gibbs, you know, mm -hmm. I said, okay. uh, uh, you know, and um, because I really like music anyway. So, um, but he also taught me a lot about composition and songwriting. Mm -hmm. and, I, I told him at an early age, I wanted to be a composer. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. You knew that right at the beginning. He said, he said um, well, you know, you're going to have to do a lot of work. He said, you're going to have to learn how to write for all the instruments. You know, you're going to have to, you got to learn how composers put their pieces together and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, I'm, yeah, that's what I want to do. So when he, when he would give me a lesson, he would, he would talk to me about how um, the composer constructed the piece, mm. you know, and mm -hmm. the, you know, the intervals and you know and all of that and mm -hmm. uh, that that really served me well because when I graduated I had you know a pretty good knowledge of music and and composition mm -hmm. and so I went to school for composition after that for mm -hmm. to, to college mm -hmm. uh, well, I went to Juilliard and, and studied composition there and then I finished at uh, Long Island University I got the I got the privilege of, of uh, studying with, with um, with, with a lot of you know good uh, composition uh, mm -hmm. teachers, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and um, you know I, I was just blessed all the way around because I had that good instruction and um, gotcha. Gotcha. I, I took in a lot too, and, and 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 I incorporated a lot of those things in my compositions, you know, uh -huh. my, uh -huh. my yep. composition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And, so, um, and that's that's one of the things that I loved about you that you did incorporate like a lot of your, your classical training and all that in, in your in your composition. And dude, I'll tell you, I recognize it. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, awesome, awesome. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. So, so did you do when, when you were learning, you know, learning how to play piano? Did you do like the, the you know, the recitals and all that? Um, not too many when I was younger. Uh, mm -hmm. I did more when I went to college. Mm. Uh, and because our composition department, um, we had a thing where every semester we had to do a, a, a piece. We had to write a piece uh, for, the, for the composer's concert, uh -huh. student composer's concert. There was okay. a concert every semester. And the composition students had to employ, you know, other musicians who were in, in the school Mm -hmm. to do to, to play their pieces you know uh and i i had to do that every semester and mm -hmm. sometimes i would be performing but sometimes i'd only be directing you know, because i'd be oh, directing an ensemble that i had written for you know because mm -hmm. sometimes i just write write for string quartet 
you know, or I would write for, you know, a combination, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. piano and, you know, maybe horns or whatever, you know, whatever mm -hmm. idea I had, mm -hmm. uh, I would, I would write the piece for. Mm -hmm. And I would just conduct sometimes. Sometimes I would conduct other people's pieces, you know. Oh, pieces, um, that, pieces that, that they had written. That, that other comp composers would, would write. Mm -hmm. I would conduct it for them, you know, because sometimes they would be performing in the, in the ensemble. Gotcha. And so, um, but it was a great experience. That experience really taught me a lot about orchestration too. Mm -hmm. because, you know, that's very important mm -hmm. uh, when, when, you're, when you're writing a song or when you're recording it. You know what instrument's going to do what? You know, uh, I mean? mm. you know, uh, and uh, that's part of the puzzle. You know, mm -hmm. that, that a, a, an arranger has to figure out. Mm -hmm. You know, what do what does all, what do all the different instruments do? Mm -hmm. you know, and and do they do they work well together? Does this you know do they have the right part? Are they playing the right parts? You know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that and that uh, exercise in, in college really. Uh, helped me with my own thing because now I can I can hear I can hear the whole piece sometimes before mm -hmm. I start right before I start you know recording it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes mm -hmm. I'm thinking about music and you know my wife would be talking to me. She said, "Chris, did you just hear what I said?" I said, oh, "I'm I'm sorry. I just I just had a song in my head." <laughs> <laughs> If, if you don't if, if you don't have that you, it's hard to explain it to someone else no I'm, you right know I mean? right mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um that's one thing that i do have and i and, and i'm blessed i'm blessed in that way that i can hear my own music and know where i'm going before i start recording it wow wow okay it's it's, it's a it's a great it's a great thing to have because recording you know and you know this recording mm -hmm. and there's no guarantee <laughs> what's going to happen when you come out of that studio, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's no guarantee. So uh -huh. I, I think the more you can hear, mm -hmm. the better mm -hmm. off you are. Because, mm -hmm. you know, hey, I don't want to go in that direction. Uh, I'm going to take the song this way. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. It's, it's a little bit of an advantage. L let me ask you, because you were talking about, like, the, like the instrumentation, um, how you would use, like, certain instruments because you knew what they, what they were supposed to sound like or how you wanted them to sound. Um, did you at, at any time, and I'm, I'm sure you probably have, but I, I'll just ask this anyway, as far as like uh, a, a restriction, a certain like, okay, I, I want to do this, but I can't do this because the rules say I got to do it this way. Did you ever feel like that restrictive at, at times or does that make sense? Um, I don't, I'm not sure I know what you mean. Um, yeah, as far as like some of the instrumentation, you were just talking about like some of the instrumentation, all that that's, that you'd use and you'd pretty much know like how to use that. Mm -hmm. And and I, I tell people like when we were coming up in the business, I think um, and nothing against like any other time, but I think personally like that time that we came up, that was like the best time to me because I mean, although there's a box, we found ways to break out of that box, you know, and mm -hmm. and, and and again, I, I keep talking about your work. I mean, you, dude, I mean, talk about, you know, yeah, there's a box. I'm getting out of here and I'm going to do this and I'm going to make this work, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I guess that's what I mean as far as like those instruments that you work with. Um, did you feel any kind of like being locked in the box that I have to use it this way? Well, it's when, you know when you when you're with a group, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have to consider the other musicians and mm -hmm. what they're going to play. Like you know, I know you know Marvin played bass, Ernie played guitar. He mm -hmm. also plays drums too, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and I play those instruments too. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's 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 working with that unit. <clears throat> and, and that's what I used to do with the Isaac Brothers is what what can I do with this unit? <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, get the most from it. Mm -hmm. And when we first started off, it was more limited. But when the synthesizer started to come into the picture, then everything opened up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. all those mm -hmm. possibilities opened up to us mm -hmm. because no longer do we have to maybe, uh, you know, get a string ensemble, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, a lot of the string sounds you know, from synthesizer. Uh, mm -hmm. There's other things, you know, like the, the song that sound in Port of Love of You, mm -hmm. which 
maybe a woodwind would have played, mm -hmm. you know, but a synthesizer, you know, I, I heard that and, and the synthesizer could take, I used to, I used to play things in the same manner as I would write for an orchestra. Okay. Okay. Uh, like even, even some of the things I played on piano, you know, mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. something that an orchestra would play. Mm -hmm. You know, I could give parts to each voice in the chord mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the orchestra. And it uh, would, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and I'm talking particularly with ballads. I'm, I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. you know, like, um, now maybe some of the things I play would make me say it again. You know, on the, da -ba -ba -ba, you know, all mm -hmm. the harmonies that I played on the keyboard would be right. something that the orchestra could pick up. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, in my playing, I was I was kind of uh, uh, mimicking the orchestra in a way. Okay. You know? okay. Um, and you can um, hear that. And you you, you mentioned uh, for the love of you. I mean that iconic keyboard line, that that synthesizer line. Like, yeah, it, was, it was something. It's like, well, you know, I don't have a an, an old bowl here, and then, uh -huh, <laughs> you know, right. So we don't really need it now because uh -huh. you know, I have this ARP twenty six hundred. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and this it fits right in. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, funny that you mentioned that because when it, when it, when I heard you know every time I like when it first came out I'm like man I can totally hear it in orchestra and I can hear it. You said it was uh, was it meant for an oboe? If, if it was an orchestra well, playing that, know, would an oboe be playing yeah, that part? It's probably an oboe or a flute. You know. Right. Okay. You know, in in that in that area. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But um, you know the synthesizer picked it up and 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 and, and that has its own sound. You know, mm -hmm. it's a mm -hmm. little bit different too than those mm -hmm. woodwinds. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very smooth and, you know, fits right in with, with what I was playing on the piano. Right, you know? right. That was so, one of the things I loved about your writing, man. I mean, you know, uh, uh, you could hear the orchestra. I mean, it was definitely, you know, it was a big, it was an orchestra that was playing there. Although it was like the band, you made it huge, man. It was huge. So that's one of the things I loved about listening to your playing and listening to your like, writing. And and writing. The, like when I, if you heard Afternoon and Chris Jasper, and I, and I hope people go there, and, yeah, and, you know, because when I played "Let Me Down Easy," I didn't mm -hmm. play it the same way I played it on the record. I played it in the classical form. Yep, mm -hmm. you know the the way I originally heard it. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. it's it's a big orchestra sound I hear for that for that song. Uh -huh. I mean, I could orchestrate it, and uh -huh. it would sound like you know huge, you know, right. because right. the melody and the chords lend itself to that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I demonstrated that in that in that yeah. piece. Yep, yep. Who who were some of your 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 classical influences on piano? Uh, the biggest ones were uh, the the Romantic period. Uh, Debussy, uh -huh. Ravel, um, you know um, Gershwin. You know a lot of stuff he did. Uh, uh -huh. You know, uh, but those I, I think the biggest the, the the I pulled the most from those uh, the composers mm -hmm. because of the. Uh, the harmonies they used, the, mm -hmm. the intervals, you know, mm -hmm. um, they were introducing different degrees of the scale from the classical. Yes. You know, going a little bit further, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and the, the, using some of the, you know, the sevens and then, you know, the, yeah. and then first when he got into the sixes, you know, the, the, right. the, the, the clusters and, mm -hmm. and all those things. And, and, and I used a lot of that in, in my, um, in my chord structure. Mm -hmm. And it, it, so my core structure is a little bit of jazz, but a little bit of classical too. Yeah, okay. right. I know. I know. <laughs> and then it creates a, a, a nice uh, sound that you can recognize. You know, that's mm -hmm. what I was going for. Because mm -hmm. I, I, when I grew up, um, I used to listen to Motown stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know something, Nate? When that records come on, you know that's a Motown record. Exactly. I, mean, I don't yeah. care who the artist is. Right. You know, you know that's Motown, and so I wanted to have something that was identifiable, identifiable too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I found it in the chord structure, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. where the set when as soon as it comes on, boom, somebody should recognize that. Hey, that's the sound. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, um, that's that's what I was going for, and that's that's what that combination created. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I know when I was uh, when I was going on the road and. Um, I was showing some of the other because I have other keyboard players, you know, go on the road with us, mm -hmm. and I was showing the chords and say, "Hey, that's that's different than what you know." 
<laughs> where I was playing. I said, like, yeah, it's a little bit different. The voice is a little bit different, you know. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, it's something like between the sheets, the chord structure on there. Right, yes. You, know, you, can, uh -huh. you can hear there's a little bit of jazz in there, you know. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. Not all the way, you know. Right, uh, right. And that's what I'm saying. You, for R&B, R&B is a, a, is a very kind of special uh, uh, kind of genre as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. So much can be added to it if you just do it subtly. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you just subtly go into it, not overdo it, because you, you know, I think I think Earth Wind and Fire was more jazz than we were, you know, mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. more jazz than we were. Mm -hmm. uh, so Stevie, Stevie Wonder used a lot. If you listen to Stevie's records, there's a lot of jazz influence in there. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Um, but not so much, you know. My core structure is not so much mine. Mine was a little more mixture of the uh, classical too. Yes. Yep. And and it and, and made it a little different than, mm -hmm. than theirs. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it, even some of the lines. I mean, you know, outside of like of, of the chords. I mean, some of like those those lines, like you mentioned, you know, be, uh, between the sheets. You know, da, 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 and, you know, yeah. and I can totally hear like you know like okay, would that be a violin playing? That? I mean, I'd be sitting there like, man, I can. <laughs> You know, yeah. playing that line, or you know, like we mentioned that iconic line, uh, uh, for the love of you, that signature key line in there, um, keyboard line in there. Um, man, I mean, you so so when you wrote, I mean, you actually, I mean, even for 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 the for the Isley brothers, when you wrote, you wrote for an orchestra. I mean, you you came at it like that. I, yeah, I'm you know, like I said, my whole life before I even started with the Isley brothers mm -hmm. was classical. Mm -hmm. well, so I heard things. <laughs> I heard things that maybe someone who wasn't trained classically mm -hmm. would hear. Mm -hmm. Like if you were just strictly a blues guy, mm -hmm. right, you may not hear the kind of chords that I was that I was coming up with. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because we're all we're all um, we can produce what we uh, uh, are trained to do. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, I think that's what made our music a little different. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. to say, that's probably mm -hmm. what made our stuff a little different. Because if you listen to the Isley Brothers before '73 mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. even before '72, mm -hmm. it sounds a lot different. The music it does. You're right. Mm -hmm. And the arranger at that time was George Patterson. He he was like the guy who arranged the music. Okay. He was. He wasn't a classical guy. He was a, he was a saxophone musician, and you know his exposure was different than mine. Mm. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the music was different. You know, mm -hmm. uh, they, they played for other band, uh, artists too, the Midnight Movers. They were called. Mm -hmm. they, they played mm -hmm. for Wilbur Pickett, I think, and some other people. But their their background was different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so. George, hey man, when he when he arranged the song, it was with his experiences. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He, mm -hmm. he was a horn player. There was a lot of horn playing in, in, in that music. You know, mm -hmm. they had a horn section. And that's what right, the music That's right. I forgot they did. There was a horn section in there. Right. So but when I came in, you know, that's when the music changed a lot. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. it's totally different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? And then they got on top of that, you know, you know, Ernie playing, you know, the rock kind of feel, that even changed it more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it like it's like a big difference between the music before '73 and then '73 mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And and I mean, even even with those different styles, like like you mentioned, Ernie Ernie, Ernie on the guitar, you know, he brought like that rock influence. Um, but but man, when you guys uh, hit the the funk. Can that, anybody do it? Can anybody do it harder? That's a totally different thing. See, that's that's another thing. I have uh -huh. a right now. I have up on my white website uh, a song called "Doing My Thing," and it's some okay. it's funk on there. I also have a song I'm getting ready to put up tomorrow. "Man Up." <laughs> oh, and it's, and it's you know, "Man Up." That's something. That's that is something that um, I don't think you can learn. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in music class or, or, mm -hmm. or you know, with here. piano lessons. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's here. Um, it's got, yeah, it's got to be, you got to have rhythm, number one. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, because that's the thing that makes funk really work. Mm-hmm. It's tight rhythm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. And then you got <laughs> and you guys are tight, man. <laughs> it's just gotta be inherent in you. I mean, it's I don't know. It's, I'll take take me to the next phase for for example. Mm-hmm. Like Ernie was playing one bass pattern, right? For take me to the next phase. Mm-hmm. And before we started recording it, and I said, you know, Ernie, I, I'm feeling a little something different. I said, Ernie, go out, go out in the booth and play the drums, and I'm gonna play the bass synth in here. Uh huh. You know. And he started the drum beat off, and then I just started playing the riff. I don't know mm-hmm. why. You know what I mean? It's like I didn't think about it. I just said, this is what I'm feeling. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that, I just kept doing it, and I was like, "Yeah, that's solid. That's solid. That's tight." Mm-hmm. You know, hard. And, but you got to feel that, mm-hmm. you know. And um, funk is a feeling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I just, you know, yeah. I don't know why, but you know, <laughs> I, I just have that thing to, uh-huh. to recreate it. Uh-huh. You know? uh-huh. Different ways too. I uh-huh. mean, a lot of my funk songs are not going to sound the same, you know. Like some groups, right. you know, you know, okay, they're going to do it like this, you know. Mm-hmm. It sounds the same. I, I can do different types of funk, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. sounds, sound, diff, use different sounds, and that's where the synthesizer is like really, really um, helped me as a as a writer was uh, funk uh-huh. because uh-huh. you know you can have different sounds come out of that thing, you know what I mean, and. Uh-huh. Um, you can add different flavors. Mm-hmm, you, know? mm-hmm. uh, you can even you can even play different instrument parts with the mm-hmm, synthesizer. Mm-hmm, you know, if you want to. Right, uh, right. And, and talk about sound designing, man. I mean, you're like <laughs> one of the pioneers of sound designing. I mean, some of the sounds you you come out of there with, like, what? How? What? <laughs> what? I mean, really yeah. Cool. You know, that that has really opened up. You know. I, I think for keyboard players, like mm-hmm. so many possibilities, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and and there was I, there was no intimidation factor with you. Use of it is if you know, see, like I know what a guitar, how to play guitar, and okay. I know how to play funk on the guitar. So if I want to play a guitar part on the synthesizer, I know what to play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I know mm-hmm. what's going to sound good. On this, it, even if it's on the synthesizer, mm-hmm. uh, and and that's that's where orchestration comes in. If you know what other instruments are capable of, you know their range, mm-hmm. you know, and all of that, you're going to be a better uh, orchestrator with the synthesizer because Got, okay. you're not going to do things that don't sound right, right? With that particular instrument sound, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. You're going to play the right thing. Because you know what that instrument is capable of, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Like if I mm-hmm. like if I play a, a bass part on the synthesizer, mm-hmm. hey, I know the range of a bass. Right. I know, I know oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna play anything weird. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> it's not gonna right. sound right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's that's the advantage of knowing, you know, orchestration. Uh-huh. Uh, mm-hmm. And. It's, and and I, I I love that way of thinking because I mean that's that's why and it's like if I'm gonna play this on a keyboard I want it to sound like that which means I can only go so far, you know as far as like the range or whatever and right. you know of course you, you you tweak things to kind of make it sound as close to that instrument as, as you can and, right. or whatever but I mean keeping that in mind because I mean you know I'm I'm sure you've heard like over the years like um, a sax solo being played on like for example a sax solo being played on a keyboard and mm-hmm. you're kind of like that's not a sax <laughs> yeah that's, you, know, you know what i mean you don't play it the way a saxophone player would play it right right it's not gonna sound right 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 um and i get the innovation i mean you're thinking innovative but i mean yeah. to me it's like you're you're yeah. you're playing like a sax sound and i want i don't hear a sax playing <laughs> you know I, if uh, that makes sense I happened to, I, I did that one time and on did you? Prince of Peace. Uh-huh. And um, uh-huh. It, it, it sounds like a saxophone. You know, it uh-huh. sounds, you know. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> because, because I know how to write for a saxophone. Mm-hmm. Right? I mm-hmm. know the range. I know mm-hmm. the sweet spot in the sax. Mm-hmm. See, that's another thing. Ah. Sometime on the synthesizer, you got to play in the sweet spot of the instrument mm-hmm. to Good make point. it sound correct. 
great point. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if you go too far out of the range, it's gonna say, oh, okay. Right. You know what right. I mean? Mm -hmm. Even if you mm -hmm. even even if the um, synthesizer has a great program, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if you go too far out of the range, it's gonna uh, away from the sweet spot. It's gonna sound. Uh, it's a, it's a keyboard chart. It's a keyboard player trying to sound like a sax player. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like yeah, you know, that's not quite the, right. You know. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So you you, you, have, you have to know that to stay in that sweet spot. You know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And let me ask you, you were talking earlier um, as far as like the different kinds of funk that you, that you did. There's one song in particular that was like one of my favorites and I remember when it came out and I'm like, that's different. And I'm, I'm referring to Fight the Power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the groove on that one, one of the first things that struck me was the, 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 the tempo of the song. I mean, that song like drove, yeah. you know, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like, yeah. wow, you know, and I, I'd, I'd see the dance floor and people like run out to the dance floor and all that. And I, it just kind of struck me that um, it wasn't like in that like slow funk kind of thing. It moved, it moved. Yeah, yeah, and of yeah. course, like the sounds that were involved and all that stuff. What, what was, for you musically, what was the inspiration for like that that groove? Was it that uh, something that just happened or? or... Yeah, it, like like I was saying with Next Phase, um, Ernie, Ernie was playing the guitar part on mm -hmm. the day. And I was upstairs and I came downstairs and said, Ernie, what? Let me let me just play along with you. Uh -huh. you know? uh -huh. And I started playing that mood with the synthesizer part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. And I, I said, like, yeah, that's working. That's working. <laughs> so, so we put it we put it on the um on the TIAC recorder. The right? TIAC recorder. Recorded it. <laughs> I still have it, by the way. In and my, it still works, doesn't it? In, yeah, in my studio here, right? I still have it. Uh -huh. And um we put down the drum part. That move the synthesizer part and the guitar mm -hmm. part. That's mm -hmm. how that started. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and on, it's, you know, once we got to the studio, I had this Mutron three, right? And, and, and I and I said, all right, we're moving along, but we need something to just lock it up, lock it, it up, right, right, lock this <laughs> thing up. Uh -huh. I started playing the Mutron part. I said, that's it. Uh -huh. And it, it just all locked up together. Right. And um, that was fun. That was a fun session. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can, you, and, it, and it jumps out from the grooves. You can tell it was. <laughs> I, when, I, when I first had the Mutron, we, we were recording with the guys who did Stevie Wonder's uh, production, you know, Malcolm Cecil and. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Bob mm -hmm. And. I was out, we were getting ready to record the song Heat Us On. And mm. oh, okay. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't hear, they hadn't heard the, the Mutron <laughs> effect. Oh. And there's a part where I sustain a chord and the sweeping effect goes. <laughs> right. And they both ran out of the, 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 the control room. What is that? What are you doing? What are you working on? Because, you know, they were, they were synth, synth guy. Malcolm. Uh, oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Was synthesizer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tonto. Mm -hmm. Which I used, you know, when we were out there. But man, he, he hadn't heard that. He didn't. He didn't know about the, the <laughs> mutron. He ran out there. He said, "Wait a second. What is that? What is that? What is that sound?" Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I said, "Yeah, this, this all it is. This pedal, man. This pedal." Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, and that, that, that that was a great session. That, yeah. Because you know, yeah. we just want to love you on an album. Uh, you know, it was sensuality. Mm -hmm. It was really a tight package of songs that work well together. There's only six mm -hmm. songs on the album. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but they were all good. <laughs> awesome. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Um your jazz jazz influences. Like I, I know I know that you started with Billy the great Billy Taylor. Yes. Yes. That was what, a great what was that like? You, you know, I what struck me the most about him was how um, really down to earth he was, you know. He yeah. was just a, I mean, it's like you're talking to your uncle or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. easy going, you know, mm -hmm. but so mm -hmm. extremely talented, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. you know um, because there were some people out of uh, the post campus that <laughs> were kind of, you know, like out of the world, you know, kind of, you know, above everybody, you know. <laughs> and, but, they, and, let, and they let you know that. <laughs> Oh yeah, well you know, but Mr. Taylor, man, he was you know he was 
he was right there. Man. I, I, I used to, I used to like to uh, like sometime after class, you know, he he talked to you and talked to me and um, he play a little something, you know, to show about uh, you know the how you know maybe Art Tatum would do something or you know Fats Waller or those guys, you know, mm -hmm. he, he played in all those guys' styles too. Mm -hmm. he, yeah, he was good about it. He was he was one of the best. I mm -hmm. mean. Mm, mm. And this person too, man. Yeah, I, I, I really, I really got me. You know that this guy was just so, so nice. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That that's something. I mean, you you meet you meet a bunch of talented people, such as yourself. You meet a bunch of talented people, but to me, it's like that person in spirit. Are are they cool? And and you know they make it comfortable for you to talk to them and all that. And it sounds like Mr. Taylor was 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 that same that same yeah, thing. That's nice. the first thing I noticed. If you if you have that spirit where you're like so much better than everybody else, like yeah. okay. <laughs> No, no, this, this, this guy was cool, man. Mm, mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Um, gospel influences. And to, to all those watching, see, see, this man has done it all. <laughs> has done it all. Man, gospel, man. You know, mm -hmm. I, can, I can think, you know, the Winans, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I like a lot of stuff they did. Uh, do, you, do you play B3? Um, I've played it, but I'm, you know, I'm more of an electric piano clavinet. You and me, yeah, um, me, straight, straight grand I, piano. You know, <laughs> but I, I can play, I can play the organ, but it's just not, you know, I'm not drawn to it. You know what I, I mean? I understood. I totally understand. I, I get I'm drawn it. Drawn to these other instruments, mm -hmm. you know. Like mm -hmm. I remember when I first got my first Fender Rhodes, man. I used to, you know, I mean that was it. That was it. I didn't have to have any other uh, uh, instrument until. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Until Stevie Wonder came out with Superstition. Do you have a Fender Rhodes in your arsenal? Do I have what? Do you have a Fender Rhodes in your arsenal, in your keyboard arsenal? I, I had it, but I don't have it anymore. Okay. Um, the, the reason I ask is that you mentioned that, and I was at a session yesterday where they had a Fender Rhodes in there, and it's been years since I sat down behind a Fender Rhodes. And as you well know, <laughs> you know, he didn't even turn it on. And you know, you just you just hit that chord, and that sound comes out of there. Mm -hmm. That little the little bell sound that comes out of there without it even being on. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a real deal. Does it work? And then he turned it on. The feel, the sound, the richness of it was like, man. And like I said, I haven't played like a real Fender Rose in years. And all the, I mean, they come out with like different keys and all that stuff, and nothing against them, they're good, but and nothing is a Fender Rose. You <laughs> know, the the sound, the the, the studio, mm -hmm. the thing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that you know. That's, you know, it was, you know, Sunshine in My Life, you know, was an example. Yep, yep. The use of that, that, that Fender Rose. And yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really brought it up in the mix, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, awesome. I got the D6 clavinet, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Every, every, <laughs> the original clavinet. <laughs> after Superstition, every studio had. Uh, <laughs> every single one. That, that was like standard. Rhodes. D6 like, clarinet. That's what you saw <laughs> when you walked in every studio in the country. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, Honer really, you know, they, oh, they, they locked it. A lot. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Because he sold so many clavinets. Uh-huh. <laughs> that is so true. After after that one, everybody had that one. Everybody had that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I was blessed. I think that one person in the entire town had one. And of course, he was he had all the attention of the entire music community back home, you know, so, so with speaking of back home, by the way, um, from Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, yes. right down the street, right down the street from Akron, just, you mm -hmm. know, you know <laughs> where I'm from. Mm -hmm. So um, as far as like coming up there in Cincinnati, what was the music, the music community like, you know, coming up? Uh, Cincinnati, you know, like when, when I was in Cincinnati, there wasn't a lot of, people doing like band things, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, they were like individual musicians. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? um, like I was studying music, you know, you, you might meet somebody else and they study music. Gotcha. But as far as bands were concerned, uh, I didn't run into too many of them, you know, mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. And I knew mm -hmm. there were some because, you know, was, uh, people recorded in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, James Brown being one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, for me, it was more of a, a personal kind of, you know, thing. Uh, 
playing music and, and playing piano. And sometimes I would come uh, up with my own, you know, songs, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just, just to try to get used to composing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Writing something that didn't exist. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. That was my thing, wanting to create. And, and I also had other interests too coming up. I, I was studying architecture, mm -hmm. you know, um, I was playing sports, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a lot going on when I was a kid. You know? you, yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, let me see, where is this in my notes? Um, as a matter of fact, I wrote all the, I wrote this down. I quote, as if everything that you've done wasn't enough, Chris would eventually earn, am I pronouncing this right, a Juris doctorate degree? Yeah, I, I, got, I got Um are you, a, are you a bona fide lawyer? Well, I, I'm a Juris doctor. I, I studied and I finished law school. Uh, I didn't take the bar exam because I, I don't I okay. think I wanted to practice. You know? I'm sorry, say that, say that again. I didn't think I wanted to practice law. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I just okay. wanted to get the understanding of the law because, you know, this is a nation of laws. You know, uh -huh. and music, there's laws that pertain to music, mm -hmm. copyright, you know, to contracts. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to understand that since I have my own record label, I wanted to understand what, mm. what the law's position was as far as music was concerned, that's the that's that's the reason I went back to law school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, and this and this all this all came about when you you went there when you started your, your record label Gold Gold City this, Records, I, by the way. This was after I had my record label going for a while. This was okay. I got I finished my degree in '04. Okay. You know, so okay. um, was that always a thing in you? I mean, you had you you eventually. That's I'm do that. Was that always a thing in you that I'm going to learn the law? <laughs> Well, it, it was it was always a part of my life because my wife went to law school first. I was going to ask if she was your inspiration on that. Yeah, she went to law school first. Uh -huh. and got that degree. But even even before that, a lot of my the people I talked to were accountants and lawyers. Wow. So it was it was kind of a natural thing, you know, for me, you know, because okay. Um, and like I said, I always wanted to know the legal aspects, you know, what, what the law had to say about copyright in particular, mm -hmm. because, because that is, the, that is uh, copyright is, a, is equivalent to, say, a title in, in, in say, real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, you own a piece of property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get a title. Well, when you own a song, you own the copyright. Right, right. Right. And I wanted to know all those things. I wanted to know, you know, what the rights a person had even before they signed anything. Mm -hmm. Like if you wrote a song, what rights did you have right from the beginning before you, you know, signed with the publisher, before you signed with the record company? Mm -hmm. What rights do you have right now? You know it, I mean? Isn't that something? I mean, just the way you put that, when you when you write a song, you want to know what your rights are to your song. <laughs> I mean, that, it's just like, right. what? <laughs> It's my yeah, song, so I should have every right to that song. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. legal rights you have before you even, you know, go with a publisher, before you even sign a record deal. Mm -hmm. You generally, when you sign that contract, you're signing something away. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Basically, that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. you're signing something, something you created. For something in return, they might give you in return, mm -hmm. you know, like an advance mm -hmm. or, you know, and I always say in advance, <laughs> the way it's structured, <laughs> it's like one of the worst things that, that they created. Right, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Basically, the record company has no stake. Mm -hmm. They have no mm -hmm. stake if they're gonna if they're gonna recoup it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they're gonna give you if they're gonna give you five dollars, right? And then they take the five dollars back from your earnings. Mm -hmm. What what have they what have they put up? And right, <laughs> exactly. You see what I'm saying? Well, and you still owe them. <laughs> right. It, you know, it's, it's like they have no stake in the product, pro uh -huh. in the project. Mm -hmm. Basically, the way, the way it goes. And like I said, that's interesting how you put that. And that, that is the truth. I mean, this is something that I wrote. I should have 150% ownership of that. But by virtue of you signing a contract, you don't. It's like, okay, there's something wrong with this picture right here uh, from the beginning, you know. But, you know, hey, we all, we all want to be stars. It's a fair way to write a, a, an agreement. But the way they're generally written, they're not fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
The only way you can make it fair is to understand the rights you have going in. I mean, how do you, how can you make a fair agreement if you don't know the rights that you have going into the agreement? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't know what you're giving away. Right, right. Most of the time. Most <laughs> and, honest, don't know what I, I, until you try to go to collect and find out that no, you gave it all away. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, it, you know, you get somebody in to say, well, you know, a judge, usually a judge has to tell you. Right. <laughs> because it, it'll go to a court case, you know. And then the judge say, well, no, you give that up, you gave that up, you gave that up, you know. Right, boom, boom. right. And, you as know. and as a result, now you owe this court. <laughs> you know, so, you know that's, that's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. But that's the reason I went back. Mm -hmm. I got curious because I wanted to know you know, all those things, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, especially with, with, like I said, copyright and contracts, gotcha. because that's, you know, for the record industry, that's, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. It's about copyrights and it's about what's in that contract. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get paid anything else, but what you, what is stated in that agreement. Gotcha. The four corners of the agreement, the four corners doctrine is called. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let, let me ask you. Oh, well, see, I thought I was going to, I thought, <laughs> you thought. No, that doesn't work. That was no. your first mistake. <laughs> no, no, no. It's got to be in that document. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. L let me ask you what, as opposed to like when you were coming up, what do you think of the business now? Like um, actually leading up to now. Um, it's the, the business now. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, you know, a lot has changed, you know. Mm -hmm. Technology has kind of, you know, ruined a lot, a lot of it. You know, ah. you know, the free downloading and all that, uh -huh. taking a lot of it out, out of the business. Mm -hmm. you know? um, mm -hmm. But um, it used, you know, it used to be more focused on music. I put it that way. Agreed. Agreed. Um, all the all the labels, they were looking for talent. They were looking for really talented people that had something um, unique, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and if it was a group, the self and the self-contained group was the most valuable, you know, the ones mm -hmm. that, that play their own music, they could write it, you know, they could go in the studio, they didn't need a whole lot of extra songwriters to go in there with them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's what's different too, is there's not a lot of groups anymore. Oh um, my gosh. You know, oh my gosh. Um, mm. you, you know, there used to be a lot of bands. Mm -hmm. you, know. mm -hmm. you nailed something that's dear to my heart. I mean, even right now, which is, I say that all the time. There are no bands like when we were coming up, no self-contained bands. Everything is solo. And nothing against that. I mean, it is what it is. But there are no bands to speak of it, speak of anymore or up and coming bands, you know. And and the the, the, the business did that, do you think? Or? Well, I think our culture partially did it too. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember coming up, just about every household that I went in had a piano and somebody wow. could play it. Mm -hmm. You know, or they played another instrument. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it was very commonplace to see students walking around with, say, a, a violin case or with a case. Yep. Yep. Case or, yep. You know what I mean? mm -hmm. yep. Music was in our schools. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, there, there's something to say about that. When you learn how to read music, it's almost like learning a different language. It is. And it, it is. helps it you learn. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been studies that show that uh, when, when kids learn music, when they learn how to play an instrument, they learn faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They retain information better. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so even if you, if, even if you don't go into the music field, as, as, as an occupation, it's still in, to your advantage to know how to play. I mm know -hmm. there, there used to be like people who were, who were lawyers and you know doctors. They were very you know good at playing the piano. Right. You know right. what I mean. Right. Yeah. Um, but that part of learning how learning music has has, has gone away from our culture for some reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I think. It, it takes away from what, see, I, I, there was, there's always a benefit when somebody else can do something very well. You know what I mean? You can also, mm -hmm. we can learn from each other. But, mm -hmm. but when people stop doing it, right? 
-hmm. You don't get that feedback. You don't, you don't get that influence. Mm -hmm. You know, we were all influenced by somebody. Mm -hmm. right? Wow. Right. And what if those people that we were influenced by didn't play their instrument or didn't mm -hmm. compose? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. We would we we wouldn't be as rich culturally. True. Right? Mm -hmm. So it, it hurt it hurts the culture when when people don't learn how to play music. They don't mm -hmm. learn instruments. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Um I always say just because something is new doesn't mean it's better. You know, um, they, you know, like a lot of times people say, oh, well, you know, this is a new thing. This is a new thing. Well, wait a mm -hmm. minute, stop for a second. Mm -hmm. Is it better? Right. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. that's the, that's what you have to go for is quality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you try to make the best, you know, I always say, are, are, the, are the new cars today better than the ones you know, say like in the seventies, right? You know, are, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are they really better? Right, right. <laughs> uh huh. The material mm -hmm. that, that they use, the right. cheap stuff Good in the point. world, right? Mm -hmm. No, no longer do they use chrome, real steel. No, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's like what? It's, they're plastic. <laughs> they'll charge you ten times more for the right, right. automobile mm -hmm. that's made out of really a lot cheaper material mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but if but if you don't know what came before you won't know what you what they're selling you right right you know I mean? mm -hmm. they, they mm -hmm. just uh, put a bunch of stuff on the inside and say oh well see look what you you, you got this you know this, this uh all these features on the inside yeah okay what, mm -hmm. what is the car made of what 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 is this <laughs> what is this thing right right you know I mean? good point they all look the same you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Are they are they better than the other ones? No. Right, right. Because uh -huh. you can put the same stuff that's inside these cars in the in the, in the old right. car. Not right. A car. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Much better car. Mm -hmm. That's much longer. Mm -hmm. this, they, 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 was, they showed Cuba the other day. They 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 still have 50s cars that still work. They drive and they look good. Mm -hmm. In good shape. Mm -hmm. You know. Beautiful paint jobs on. Yep. You yep. Know? Mm -hmm. How good was the car? That's that a good point. That <laughs> you know, what that's I mean? a great point. Mm -hmm. How good was the car that could last that long? Mm -hmm. It'd still be in good shape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you can't keep these cars these days that long. I guarantee mm -hmm. you. Nobody's gonna be driving around. Not, not, let, not unless you treat them gingerly. <laughs> Sixty years later, they're not gonna uh, be in existence. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The material, you know, the materials is cheap. Yep, right. you're right. This is. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, I I want to ask you as far as like the synthesizer when you played the synth when the Moog first came out. Okay. Um, I don't know how old you were when they came out, but was there an in intimidation factor, or were you just like ready to jump in and you know, hey, look at all these bells and whistles on this thing? It was well, yeah. The first the first synthesizers I remember were like very very complicated. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember uh, Juilliard, our composition teacher, took us down um, to the studio, mm -hmm. and well, he wanted to use it for like atonal music, which was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I remember seeing it, and it was like a big, you know, this big thing with all these patch chords and uh -huh. you know mm -hmm. knobs and things, in it, and it was like, whoa, you know, hmm, you have to be an engineer to work this thing. You know, right, right. That's, that's what I was thinking, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, but then, as I when I when I when I started to use the one in California, you know, uh, the one that I, that I alluded to before, mm -hmm. uh, the one that Malcolm Cecil built, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was big, you know, mm -hmm. but it was the way he built it, the sections he, he built it in sections. Oh, okay. You know, okay. Which made uh -huh. it easier to navigate through. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, he had two ARC 2600s in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he had a, a Moog synthesizer in there and a whole bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in using them, he could patch them together. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Patch the synthesizers together and create unique sounds. Mm -hmm. and, um, 
but I still I still didn't have anything for personal use that big. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, was, I took one of the ARP 2600s, you know, <laughs> I bought one of those uh -huh. personal because right. I, I was able to get a lot out of it, you know, mm -hmm. just that mm -hmm. one section mm -hmm. with that one section of synthesizer. And then they started to, you know, make synthesizers with, um, you know, the, pre the, the, the presets. Mm, right, right. Sounds, you know. Right. Which right. made it well, a lot easier to use. Right. You know. Right. Uh, I still have a I still have a profit five, you know, which you had oh to my gosh, you had a profit. Pro program, you uh -huh. know, you program some of the sounds, you know. Right. And, and I like I like that. I like to be able to adjust, you know, and, and okay. craft your own sound, you know. Okay. Okay. Rather than just use the preset that's in there. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. But um when they start doing the presets, it made synthesizers so much easier to use. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And you can tell that you like it in all your work, you can tell this, that you like it. I was one of those when I first saw it, it's like, man, I just got used to these 88 keys right here, and now you're telling me I got like turn knobs and all that stuff. I liked it, but man, you had those keyboard players such as yourselves that like, such as yourself that just jumped all in, you know, and 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 just went for it, you know, so. Yeah, the, the, you know, um, you know, Car Caravan of Love. I mean, that's you know, oh, that's song. synthesizers. You know, except for the guitar part. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And it's um, it's just one of those things where, like I was alluding to before, it sounds though like you know it could be you know natural uh, instruments. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the string part and all that sounds mm -hmm. sounds really natural, but it's mm -hmm. a synthesizer. You know, got you, got you. Wow. It really opened up a lot in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For, for keyboard players. You know? Awesome. Awesome. Um, man, again, one of my keyboard player, uh, keyboard player heroes here, um, the legendary Chris Jasper, um, a list of awards that you've won, like uh, that's, that, you, that you've attained over the years. Um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, 92. Uh, it still took a little too long, but you know, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> You're in. <laughs> Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, let's see, uh, the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, a list of awards here. And I see, uh, did this happen yet? The Songwriters Hall of Fame, did that happen yet? Or that's coming? It's coming. It's okay. coming. Because they had to postpone it because of the pandemic. Because, got you. Got so you. They, they pushed it back, I think. And I'm sure this is just a few. I mean, look, look at that wall right there. This man. <laughs> yes, you know, it's, 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 it's great. You know, when I redid this room, I, I redid I put everything in one place. Oh, you know, okay. All over the house, you know, uh -huh. one thing over here, one thing over there, and uh, it's it's like it's something that to be in here and see all this stuff because it's just a reminder of what you know the the, the, the past and all the you know successful uh, records and I was gonna say and the incredible work you did. That, you know, <laughs> it's like it's, it's so many things, you know. Um, uh, it, it's really, it's really a blessing. I, 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 I don't believe some of this, you know, that I went through that much stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that mm -hmm. I wrote them, wrote that many songs. I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, wow. Mm -hmm. so, sometimes I forget, you know, you know, because if it wasn't a single, sometimes, and you know, I said, wow, well, I, for, I forgot I wrote that one too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, right, right. But it, it's. I, I'm kind of a workaholic in, in a way. Ah, uh, okay. Because mm -hmm. like, when we would do an album, we we do the tour. I'm right back in this, you know, in studio. Wow, really? You went right, right back, right? That's that's Please. why that's why we're able to have a, an album every year. Got you, got you, got you. So even that's... even coming up in the beginning, I mean, practicing, I mean, that was no problem for you. I mean, you you'd sit there and and go for none. You know. Um, Guys want me to come out and play baseball, you know. So <laughs> it, was, it was kind of tough when I was young, you know. But when I got older and I and I started to understand, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that this is a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, this, mm -hmm. this, this is a good, awesome. a, a good skill, you know. And awesome. so I started to take it more seriously. Mm -hmm. By the time I graduated, mm -hmm. you know, I knew it was a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I and I had a, I had a choice to make when I graduated high school. I I was going to go to school for architecture, or I was going to go for music. Mm -hmm. And I said, "All right, I've been taking music longer, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go for music." 
I'll go ahead. Go ahead. That's, that's what made me make the decision. There it is. There it is. Let, let me ask you in, in closing, um, is, and we talk about like the business um, now, you know, then and now, what advice would you have to offer like those that are up and coming in the business? Um, those that I'm sure they're fans of yours, just, just as I am. Um, and again, I mean, man, if anybody can speak to that, look at the wall behind, behind Chris right there. What, what, what advice would you have to offer those that are up and coming in the business? Wow, man, it's, I would, I would learn as much as I could about music. I mean, I would. And if would, anybody can speak to that point, I mean, I just <laughs> you, would, you heard, Chris can, absolutely. Come into this business just to try to see if you could, you know, uh, get a hit record. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's good to have a good background in music. And, and whatever you're going to do, whatever mm -hmm. job career you choose, it's good mm -hmm. to have a good background in it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and kind of kind of realize your strong point mm -hmm. because it, it's a lot of different ways you can go in this industry. Mm -hmm. And so you, you have to know what your strong point is and try to be the, the best at it, try to be the best at it, but also be wise in what you get involved in. Like, like we were talking to before about the legal aspect. Mm -hmm. Don't just sign anything, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Get mm -hmm. good legal representation, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, because I find that's that's the key to you staying in this business is, is if you mm -hmm. make the right deals, mm -hmm. the right decisions. Mm -hmm. So um, either have a good you know lawyer, you know a, a good person that advise you legally on, on, on everything you do, mm -hmm. you know, and right. listen to the advice. You know, <laughs> listen to that's another thing. Sometimes that part. You know, people hear. <laughs> You know, people get told what you know the right thing. They say, "Oh, well, now I'm gonna do it my own way anyway." <laughs> well, you know, don't don't be hasty like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take good advice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Um, in closing, um, I was talking about like Chris's keyboard talent. You know, keyboard keyboardist extraordinaire, legendary keyboardist. Um, but nobody could work the hair like that <laughs> that's when it takes all yeah that's the, the double album yeah dude i'm like oh yeah and that, that was me like you know hey hey nobody could work it like that. <laughs> so, so in closing uh mr jasper again thank you so much for taking the time to be on the playground um really enjoyed this and as i i, I can't say enough i mean I, you've always been a hero of mine i'm truly honored that you took the time to to, to come and speak to me and um, I hope you'll stay in touch. Um, I, I would love, to, I, I'm gonna keep following you regardless. So again, thank you. Thank you so very, very much. I really appreciate it.